Well, hello and welcome people all over the world. We thank the Lord for you. We thank God for another time that we could come together for another Field of Fire Live YouTube broadcast. So we give God thanks and give God praise for another day that he has made. And we make a decision. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. So we're glad to have you tonight, wherever you're listening from, wherever you're viewing from. If you're using the chat, put it in the chat for us tonight. Let us know where you're hearing us from, whether it's South Carolina, North Carolina, Southeast Asia, Africa, Belgium, uh, the Philippines, wherever you're at, just put it in the chat. Put your city in the chat. because We want to know who we're reaching. We want to know who's tuning in. So we thank the Lord for this opportunity to reach people all over the world. That's why we're going to stick with this. Why? Because this is a way that we can get the gospel to the end of the earth because Jesus Christ commands us. He said, when this gospel shall be preached to the ends of the earth, he said, then the end's going to come. So this is a means to which we will get the gospel of the kingdom of God to the ends of the earth. So we're encouraged, we're excited about what God's doing in this time. And we thank the Lord for this day and another time that we can share the word with you. Now, this week has been election election week. This week has been a week where we've had one of our major elections here in the United States. And uh, what I want to really emphasize is that we, as a nation, we must get back to God. You see, because men cannot work the problems out. Sure, we got a society that's di divided. We got a society that's Democrat and Republican. But I want you to know this, so this society just didn't get divided. America just didn't get divided. We've been divided. Wherever, ever since this political system was established, there's been division in this country. And I want you to know, men cannot bring about the answer. God has the only answer. See, because this country needs spiritual leadership. We need the leadership of the Spirit of God. We need spiritual leaders, people with spiritual insight, spiritual wisdom, and spiritual revelation to bring us out of the situations that we're in. And I'm talking about on a personal level as well as a nation, national level. We need the Spirit of God. We need spiritual leadership. And, and, and you see, this is what America doesn't want. They don't want the spiritual leadership. This country doesn't want spiritual leadership. Why? That's why they, they prioritize po uh, uh, politics. They prioritize the political system because that's man's only way of having a solution. Man cannot fix another man. Amen. A man cannot fix another man. Amen. A man needs God to fix him. Amen. But once once God fixed that man, then he can help somebody else. So we need spiritual leadership, folks. And let's pray. Let's continue to pray that God will raise up spiritual leaders and spiritual leaders will come forth with the voice of God. You see, because what this nation and the world needs it's a move of God. It's an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. It's a supernatural outpouring from heaven. That's what's going to get men's attention. That's what's going to straighten this situation out to the point that men's going to realize that God is God and that men are not God. Amen. So, so we've got to understand these things in the times in which we live in. I'm talking to the church tonight because a lot of people, they, a lot of uh, 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 carnal or, 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 or common people, I would say common or, or unsaved people, they would not be able to get a hold of what I'm talking about here tonight because this is spiritual. You see, because I minister in the realm of the spiritual, amen? But I, I know I'm very much aware of the natural and the political because this is the society that we live in. So we must be in touch with the natural. We must be in touch with politics, in touch with the news and things that's going on in the world so that we can know just how to pray, what to pray, and to see the conditions that we're in in our society. So, so, so we've got to know, folks, that a Democratic leader will not bring us out. A Republican leader won't bring us out. Only God has the answer. Amen. I said again, only God has the answer. And that's why we as the church, we must pray. We must, we must stay before God. We must petition God to raise up his voices, raise up to release his power in the earth, because that's what this world needs, folks. And you hear what I'm telling you? This work, this world needs an outpouring of the supernatural power of God. And that's what this world is, is about to get in an intensified manner. You hear what I'm telling you? God's about to release glory. God's about to release power. His power in the earth. No longer will he hide his power. He will release the glory of God like we've never seen it before. It's going to get the attention of CNN. It's going to get the attention of the White House. It's going to get the attention of the Republican Party. The Proud Boys is going to get everybody's attention. 
Why? Because it's going to be the power of God that's going, that's going to get people's attention. And that's why we got to pray. That's why we got to stay before God. You see, because uh, the Democrat, uh, our Republicans cannot work this situation out. They cannot give us what we need. All they can do is make promises. Amen. Amen. But it's God we need. We need the spirit of God. Amen. So that's why we're going to stay before God. We're going to pray. We're going to, because you see, what we need is spiritual leadership spiritual leadership from heaven god's spiritual leadership that's what's needed in this country more than anything now that's why i say a lot of people won't believe won't, won't agree with what i'm saying because if you're carnal if you're natural if you're only in a kind of in a natural way of thinking a natural you can only reason things out uh literally you will not be able to connect with what i'm saying but if you're spiritual if you got this holy ghost on the inside of you you have to say amen amen because you know this is the truth jesus said you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free well, who is the truth? The truth is Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Jesus is the truth. When we know Jesus, then we can get free. A amen. Now, I, we can get free from racism. We can get free from poverty. We can get free from sickness, disease, wars. We can get free from all of this stuff that's going on when we know the truth. Amen. Amen. You can live in a society that's bound but still be free. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. This, so this society is all bound up, but I'm free. And many of you out there are free. So we're going to stay free. We're going to pray that God would release and free others from the bondages and the captivities of the enemy. So, so tonight, we're going to go into the word tonight because I believe... I'm, I'm coming with the sword of the spirit tonight again amen i believe when i when the lord gives me a word i believe it's the sword of the spirit when he said the sword is the spirit it's it's the, it's the word that fits the time it's the word that fits the time in which we're living in and we need the sword of the spirit we need a right now a, a on time word from the holy ghost so let's pray and let's believe god tonight father we thank you for your hand over this nation we thank you for your hand over america father we pray for our politicians we pray god that you'll open their eyes and they'll come to know the truth who is jesus christ father we pray that a move of the holy spirit would hit the united states of america and the world the likes of which planet earth has never seen before father i say i pray release your glory release your power release your supernatural signs wonders and miracles that gets men's attention in the time in which we live that uh, that that there that that men would turn to god turn away from their idols turn away from themselves their money and all the things that men are are, are looking to for help and, and for security that they will turn to you god through jesus christ and father we declare victory tonight and god use the word tonight god to open the eyes of your people and open the eyes of many that are, are lost and in darkness tonight and we'll give you all the credit glory and praise will go to you in jesus name amen so tonight let's go into the word and we believe the spirit of god is going to speak to us and now uh, so get your bible your highlighter your your notebook and write down some things because we're going to share some good information with you that will pretend to the time in which we live and uh, one of the one of the things that's lacking in this earth is is God's people really coming back to prayer. You see, because I believe that, that the prayers of the righteous is going to turn help turn this situation around. And I believe it's happening. It's starting to turn. Why? Because we've got a lot of God's people that have come back to prayer. There's a remnant that have come back to prayer. There's a remnant that made prayer a priority. There's a remnant that has that has put prayer on the front burner. Amen. Of their lives, they're praying personally. They're praying uh, publicly. They're praying corporately. And I believe it's the prayers of the righteous that's going to avail much. And now what we're going to what we're going to use for a subject tonight is we're going to talk from the subject why God's people don't pray. In other words, I believe if we could come to the realization and get the revelation of the stumbling blocks that I would say many of us has put in our own lives and that Satan has brought into our own lives, we can be able to overcome those stumbling blocks and overcome those hindrances to prayer. So as we look at the subject, why God's people don't pray, I believe it's going to be enlightening. And my prayer is that it causes many of us to realize what they've been doing in their own life and what they've been allowing the devil to do to them to stop them and keep them out of prayer or keep them from having a, 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 a victorious, consistent uh, uh, always praying uh, a type of a lifestyle. You see, because this is what I'm talking about tonight. I'm talking about why people don't pray on a consistent basis. 
Now, I'm not talking about you praying just before you eat your food or you praying before a meal or you praying when you get in trouble or you praying when you see you need God or you're praying when you, you, you don't know the answer. In other words, I'm not just talking about people who pray in a crisis. I'm talking about people having a consistent every day, all day, all the time prayer life. And the, and the question that I'm going to be answering tonight is why people do not pray in that manner. I'm talking about praying consistently. I'm talking about praying on a daily, a regular basis. Praying always, the Bible says, pray without ceasing. And the question I want to answer tonight is why God's people stay away from prayer. Why God's people do not pray. Oh, okay, so let's go into it tonight. Now, now, Isaiah chapter 56 is where we're going to lay the foundation. Then we're going to go to the Gospel of Matthew. And we're going to answer this question. Because I believe that once we get a revelation and once it is exposed why people don't pray, then we will know the obstacles we need to overcome in order to have an effective prayer life. You see, because a, a, a lot of people don't pray for various reasons, and, 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 and I believe we're going we're gonna to hit those areas tonight. And if you have not been a consistent prayer warrior, somebody that prays on a regular basis, prays on a daily basis, prays without ceasing, like the Bible says, uh, always praying, if you have not been a person who will pray in that manner, if you have not joined the prayer warrior army, amen, you can now be able to, you will now be able to overcome those obstacles that have stopped you and kept you up from being pray from praying consistently. Because this is what it's all about. Amen. I'm not talking about a one-time prayer or a prayer where you get in trouble. Amen. Or a prayer before you got to go have a surgery. Amen. And you don't talk to God until you get in trouble again. You see, because that's how a lot of people operate. Amen. They pray only when they only when they get in trouble, only when they got a crisis in their life. But uh, the other times, they live their life for themselves, by themselves, to themselves, and, and they leave God out. Amen. Because when you leave God out, when you don't pray on a daily basis, you're saying, God, I don't need you. Amen. Folks, I, I want you to tell you, I want to tell you tonight, I need the Lord. You need the Lord. We need the Lord every day, all day. So we've got to pray every day and always. Uh, always. Amen. So Isaiah 56, the word of God says something here that's very important that we need to get a hold of. Isaiah 56 and verse 7. Come on, somebody tell the Lord thank you tonight. We're, we're talking about why God's people don't pray. Now, I say God's people now because we are the ones that have been given the mandate to pray in a consistent manner. I'm not talking about the lost people. I'm not talking about the world. I'm talking about I'm not talking about the Muslims or the or the Buddhists and all these people who who, 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 are, who are following a false god. Amen. Because they are following a false god. Amen. Buddha is not God. Muhammad is not God. God is God. Amen. The God who made the heaven and earth. The God that they're serving didn't make anything. Amen. But, but the God we serve made the heaven and earth. Amen. So 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 Isaiah 56 7, the word of the Lord says this here. He says, even I will bring them to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Now he's talking about his people. Now this is what we're talking about tonight. Why God's people don't pray. Okay. He said, I'll make them joyful in my house of prayer. He says, their burnt offerings and their sacrifice shall be accepted upon my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. The word says, "My house, God says, my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. Okay, so that tells me that the dwelling place of God must be a dwelling place where prayer operates. So now when we think of his house, we think of the church building. We always think of the church building and the church building can be considered as the house of God because we call, we call it the house of God. But the real house of God is you and I. Amen. So he's saying all of my people, if you claim to be a, a, a child of God, a Christian, a believer, one who knows God, a disciple, if you are, in other words, we must be people of prayer because we are his house. He said, my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. So, but there's an issue with prayer. There's an issue as to, there are issues as to why God's people don't pray. And this is what I want to address tonight. And my prayer is that you get a hold of this. And if you have not been a consistent prayer warrior, that you will you you will overcome these obstacles and you will begin to begin to be a part of this army of prayer warriors. Because folks, I want you to know God's army in the earth is the church, the remnant church. Glory to God. And you got to be a member of the remnant church. Glory to God. When I say the remnant church, the called out from the called out. Amen. I mean, I'm talking about the called out from the multitude. 
So she was saying, we got, a, we got an American church in America, but we got a remnant church in America also. We got a remnant church that's all over the earth. In other words, those that have made a decision, they're going to follow God and not follow men. They're going to follow God and not follow religion. They're going to follow the Holy Spirit and not follow the spirit of religion. That's the remnant. Amen. We're going to do it the Bible way. We're going to live the Bible way. We're going to pray in tongues. We're going to speak in tongues. We're going to operate in the gifts. We're going to cast out devils. Amen. We're going to do what Jesus did. That's the remnant. Amen. If you're not a part of the remnant, you need to connect with the remnant. Amen. Amen. Okay, so, but the remnant church is that church who are and will be God's house of prayer. Notice he said, I will bring them to my house of prayer and make them joyful in my house of prayer. In other words, prayer must be a joy. You see, because when you become a part of this remnant, when you become a prayer warrior and, and you pray consistently, prayer will become a joy. Amen. And you see, he says he'll make us joyful in his house of prayer. How is he going to do that? Amen. Why? When we see answers to our prayers take place, when we see what we've been crying out to God for happen, when things start happening, miracles start happening because we pray, glory to God, it's going to bring joy. Answers to prayer brings joy. Amen. So a lot of people are missing out on their joy because they don't pray. So this is what we're addressing tonight is why God's people do not pray. Amen. Amen. And this is going to help us. Because he says, my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. Now, let's connect this with the New Testament. Let's go to Matthew, Gospel of Matthew. Matthew chapter 21. And let's look at verse 12. Starting with verse 12. Matthew 21, 12, which is, which is, which is the New Testament parallel to Isaiah 56. One of the New Testament parallels. I say one of the New Testament because in all, I think in all, in all in three of the Gospels, Jesus mentions, he, he quotes back to Isaiah 56, 7 about his house being a house of prayer. Now let's look at Matthew's parallel to Isaiah 56, 7. Okay, verse 12, Matthew 21, 12, Matthew 21, 12. Okay, and Jesus went into the temple, verse 12, and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple, and overturned the tables, overthrew the tables of the money changers, and the seats of them that sold doves, and said unto them, It is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. Notice Jesus went into the temple. In other words, this is one of his cleansing of the temple. Jesus cleansed the temple at the beginning of his ministry, and he cleansed it at the end. Why? Because they were doing things in the temple, which was the house of God at that time, that God was not pleased with. Jesus got angry. Amen. I mean, this thing made Jesus angry because they were doing things in his temple, in his house, that should not be. And they were neglecting the true purpose and the true desire of God for the temple of God. In other words, they had, they had turned it in to a merchandising operation. They had turned it into a buying and selling operation. And they were making money. They were they, they were discarding the true purpose of the temple of God. That's why Jesus tell, he told them, he told them, he, he said, he said, in verse 13, he said, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you made it a den of thieves. But when he said it is written, he was quoting back to Isaiah 56, 7. Where he said, my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. Isaiah 56, 7. Now, Jesus quotes back to Isaiah 56, 7 here in Matthew 21. But what I want you to see here tonight, folks, is that Jesus got angry. Jesus got upset that he made, and one, one, one of the, the gospels said he made a whip. He went into that temple with a whip. And he's made to overthrow the tables, and he and he, and he overthrow the over, overthrow the, the the tables of the money changers and the seat of them the sold doves. Other words, they were selling doves. Amen. Other words, they were trying to merchandise it, what we would call today the Holy Spirit, because the dove is, is one of the symbols of the Holy Spirit. They were trying to merchandise the Holy Spirit. Other words, they were selling doves. Amen. And Jesus was not pleased with that. Jesus went in there with fire in his eyes and a whip in his hand. Glory to God. He kicked over the tables. He knocked over the chairs, ran them out of the temple. Yeah, the old gentle Jesus. Yes, it don't sound like the Jesus with a little lamb on his shoulder. Just Jesus there yeah, with fire in his eyes and a whip in his hand. Glory to God. He ran them out. Amen. He ran them out of, of the temple because they were not using the temple for prayer. Folks, let me tell you something. When we don't use our lives for prayer, don't you think it could, it could anger the Lord Jesus Christ? 
when our lives are not uh, 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 his houses of prayer? Why? Because today we are the temple. Amen. Amen. The temple is not some building. We are the temple. My life, your life, if you're saved, your life is, is, is the temple of God. Our, our bodies are the temple of God. Amen. And God wants our lives and our bodies to be places of prayer. So, so the enemy has done a disservice. He's done a disservice to the believer, to the body of Christ by blocking prayer in, in the believer's life. Now, this is what we're going to look at tonight. We're going to talk about why people don't pray. Amen. Why God's people do not pray. Amen. This is going to help you tonight. And, and uh, But I want you to see. Look at Matthew chapter 21, verse 14. After he had run them out of the temple, after he had knocked them on the table, after he had got, got not all the merchandising, Verse 14 says, and the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them. The blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them. But what he had to do first, he had to clean up the temple. He had to get rid of the idol worshipers. He had to get rid of the money changers. He had to get rid of those who were there for their own purpose. Those that were there for their selfish purposes. He had to run them out. Then the blind and the lame came in the temple and he healed them. Folks, when the temple of God, when the temples of God get cleaned up, glory to God, when we get all of our desires out of God's house, in uh, other words, we move our priorities and put God's priorities first, we're going to see healing of the lame. We're going to see the sight coming back to the blind. We're going to see supernatural miracles of the dead being raised. In other words, the miracle work and power of God is going to hit the earth when God's house becomes his house of prayer again. Folks, and I want you to know there's a remnant that has made God's temple his their house of prayer. Folks, and, 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 but he wants more people to join this prayer army. And this is this is why this is what we're addressing to, tonight. Why people don't why God's people don't pray. Amen. But I want you to see what happened here after he cleaned the temple up. After he ran them out. He said the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them. Glory to God. Many people are about to get healed like we've never seen it before. Miracles, creative miracles like we've never seen it before, folks. Are getting ready to hit planet Earth. Why? Because there's a remnant. I said there's a remnant that has made God's house their house of prayer once again. Glory to God. And the blind and the lame are going to get healed. And many are going to come to know Jesus Christ when they see the miracles and the signs. But the, the house of God must be returned to be his house of prayer. You hear what I'm telling you? In other words, God wants every believer, he wants every believer to be his house of prayer. So, but but there, there, there's a deficiency. That's why we can hold a prayer meeting. We can have a prayer meeting and we got a few a, a few people that will show up, but you hold a regular service, then everybody shows up. Folks, that's operating the old way in the new thing. You cannot, we must not operate the old way because God's doing a new thing. See, the old way was, uh, just the, the, the five or six people show up for prayer, but when time for regular service, you got the crowd. Amen. The crowd just starts dribbling at, at the end of prayer. No, that's operating, trying to operate the old way in a new system. You see, there's a new system in the in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ that has been established by prayer and by and through all that we've been through with COVID and, and being isolated and, and in quarantine, all this stuff. God has dealt with a, a, a remnant and he's brought us back to being his house of prayer. But see, those who have not kept caught the revelation of what God's doing, see, most people don't even know what God's doing. They think he's still the same. He's still operating as he was in, in 2019, 2018, and those years back. No, 2020, 2021, 2022, 23, and on. God's doing a new thing. I say God's doing a new thing. But we cannot operate the old way in the new system. Yeah, amen. I'm looking at you tonight. We cannot operate the old way in this new thing. Amen. So we've got to adjust. We've got to change. So what am I saying? Everybody that can show up for a regular service, you should show up for the prayer meeting. I said, everybody that shows up for the regular service, you should show up for the prayer meeting. Amen. If you could come, if you could come for the regular service, you can make the prayer meeting. A amen. So, 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 so this is what God is calling for. He's calling for believers to, uh, to be his house of prayer. But well, why do they do that? Why, why have people been operating like that? Why have people been uh, just coming for the, for the regular service, not showing up for the prayer? Because they don't have prayer as a priority. So now let's look into why people don't pray key number one uh, this is key number one and folks when we find out why we have not been praying then we can know what we need to overcome 
We need to know how the devil has tricked us, how he has deceived us, stopped us, because folks, there is nothing that hurts the devil more, hurts Satan's kingdom more than the prayers of God's people. I, I, I was listening to John Ramirez the other day, and you need to look him up. You need to YouTube John Ramirez. He, he's an ex-Satanist who got saved, who got filled with the Holy Ghost, and is on fire for God. He was a he was a he was a Satanist. He was a high-ranking warlock and and the satanic kingdom of the devil, and he got saved. Now he's exposing Satan and how he operates. And I heard uh, John Ramirez say the other day, he was asked the question, what hurts Satan kingdom the most? And the answer was the prayers of God's people. He said, nothing hurts the, the, the kingdom of darkness more than the prayers of God's people. He said, that's why Satan will always stop God's people from praying. And, and, and this is what we're going to look at tonight, why God's people don't pray. Now, let's take it from, from, a, from, 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 from a practical standpoint, just some basic things. There may not be no fresh revelation, may not be no deep revelation, but, but I believe it's going to expose some fresh things to us as to what's been stopping God's people from participating and operating in consistent and fervent prayer. Okay, key number one. Most people, you need to hear this, you need to write this down. Most people do not plan to pray. In other words, if you're going to be a prayer warrior, you got to have a prayer plan. You got to, we got to plan to pray, to pray. In other words, most people just don't plan to pray. They don't have prayer. They don't have a prayer plan. They don't. They don't. They don't have prayer in their vocabulary. Otherwise, they don't even plan to pray. Other words, you see, because we plan. We plan a vacation. We plan to go to work. We plan when we're gonna sleep. We plan what we're gonna eat. But most of God's people don't have, don't don't plan to pray. You so if you don't plan to pray, that means you don't intend to pray. Amen. Because whatever you intend to do, you're gonna plan it. Amen. You're going to set it up. You're going to set a place. You're going to set a time. But key number one is the why most people don't pray. They don't plan to pray. Amen. They don't have a prayer plan. In other words, they don't intend to pray. See, prayer must be intentional. Glory to God. I intend to pray as soon as I get up in the morning. I intend to pray at noon. I intend to pray all between morning and noon. I intend to pray. Amen. I got an intentional plan to pray. You, and, and, and the reason a lot of people don't pray, they don't plan to pray. They don't have a prayer plan. We must establish a plan to pray, a prayer plan. Other words, you say, what do you mean a prayer plan? Other words, set a time, set a place at, as to when and where you're going to pray. You got to set a time and set a place. You see, because if you're going on a vacation, you're going to set a time and you're going to set a place. If you're going to the Bahamas, you're going to say, well, I'm going to the Bahamas in June. I'm going to the Bahamas in July. I'm going to Bahamas in the next two weeks. In other words, I set a plan and I set a place for my vacation. Why not let's set a time and, let, and, let, and let's set a place for our prayer. Amen. Key number one, and I believe this is the num one of the number one reasons why people don't pray. They don't set up, they don't plan to pray. They don't have a plan. When we set a plan for prayer, then we've got something to focus on. Then we've got something that we're going to work toward accomplishing. Key number one, most people don't plan to pray. Now, let's go to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, we're talking about why God's people don't pray tonight, amen? And my prayer is that this will jumpstart prayer in the lives of the people of God like never before. Okay, Matthew chapter 6 and verse, and verse 6. Jesus said, But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut that, and when thou hast shut the door, pray to the Father which is in secret, and the Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. You see what Jesus said here? He said, but when you pray. Other words, it's a command. He didn't say if you pray, it would be a good thing if you, if you did pray. He said when you pray. Other words, he expects every believer to pray. So he expects every believer to plan to pray. The reason why most people don't pray, they don't plan to pray. They don't have a prayer plan. They don't have a place, they don't set a place, and they don't set a time where they're going to pray. Amen. Glory to God. If, if you're going to eat at 12 o'clock, you said, I'm going to eat my lunch at 12 o'clock. Amen. In well, other words, you, you, you set a time when you're going to do it. Amen. You set a place where you're going to eat your lunch. Why not do that with prayer? Amen. You see, number one key, why people don't pray, why God's people don't pray, they don't set up, they don't have a plan to pray. They don't plan to pray. Amen. So Jesus said here, okay, so he gives us, he gives us, he, he gives, he gives us a prayer plan here in verse six. He said, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet 
and when thou hast shut thy door, okay, so you got to have a prayer closet. And that's the place. You got to set a place. Whether it's in your bedroom, whether it's in your bathroom, whether it's in your clothes closet, whether it's in your shed, whether it's in your car, whether it's in your in, in, in your laundry room or, or wherever it is, in your kids room, wherever it is, you can wherever it is you can be alone with God. Amen. You gotta you gotta set a time when you're alone with God. Amen. That's why he says, when you enter into thy closet, and that can be any place you establish. We're talking about setting up, uh, developing a prayer plan tonight, because the reason a lot of people don't pray. They don't have a plan. They don't plan to pray. We've got to plan to pray. Amen. Glory to God. See, because we plan to pray at Harvest Center. Amen. We set prayer times. We set these prayer calls at a certain time. And, 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 and because we have a plan, people be there at that time. Amen. Why? Because they make, we have a plan to pray. I have a plan to pray in my personal life. I have a place, I have a time, and I'm going to be there at that place and time. Amen. I'm not going to let nothing get in the way. Nothing's going to distract me. Nothing's going to hold me up. I'm going to make a point. Just like I have, if I set a vacation, I, I'm going to plan to take a vacation. I'm going, I'm, going, I'm going to live up to that. If I set a place and a plan, a plan and a, a place, a time to pray, I'm going to live up to that also. Okay, so Jesus shows us here in Matthew chapter 6, verse 6, the plan to pray. He said, enter into thy closet okay so you got to establish a prayer closet some place you could be alone plan it set some place we could be alone with god you got to plan it amen set a place the closet is the place he said when well, i shut the door okay so you go in the closet you shut the door that means you shut out all the distraction you shut out the noise you shut out the television you shut out the family you shut out, you just shut things out amen amen so that you can be alone with god in other words, we're talking about setting that plan. He says, when I, when I shut that door, pray to the Father, which is in secret. And the Father which seeth in secret shall reward the opening. So that tells me where the Father is. It tells us where the Father is. Where's the Father? Where's God? God's in the secret place. The reason a lot of people can't find God, they don't. They can't find the secret place. When you can find a secret place, you can find God. Why? Because it said, the Father, which is in secret, and the Father which seeth in secret shall reward the opening. So God is found in the place of prayer. God is found in the secret place. If you want to find God, you got to go to the secret place. And that's the place of prayer. That's the Bible. The Bible says in Psalms 91, he that dwells in the secret place. He that dwells. See, you got to live in prayer. You got to live in the secret place all day long, every day. Glory to God. Why? Because that's where the Father is. Amen. People talk about, oh, I can't find God. God don't show up for me. No, no, no. How much time do you spend with God in the secret place? Because God is in the secret place and the secret place is the place of prayer so 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 god is in that secret place and he said the father he sees in secret he reward us openly glory to god hallelujah you go to that secret place you get that open reward in other words in the natural it'll be a manifestation of your prayer but we must plan to pray set up set a time set a place that we're going to meet with god and if we do that folks god's going to be glorified now let, let's take let's just take this a little bit further Acts chapter 3. Let's go, go with me to the book of Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3. And let's look at verse 1. Acts 3 1. We're talking about setting a prayer plan. You see, because the disciples in the in the in the, in the book of Acts, the disciples, they had a, pl a prayer plan. They had a time and they had a place where they they would pray. And they made a point to be there at that time. Now, he says here, uh, Acts chapter 3 and verse 1. Now, Peter and John went up together unto the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. Now, I'll stop right there. Now, Peter and John, who were the disciples of Jesus Christ, and they were leaders in that, in that first church, that, 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 that Jerusalem church, they went up together unto the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. Okay, so... They had a place and they had a time. The place was the temple. The place was the temple in Jerusalem. The time was the ninth hour. The ninth hour is 3 p.m. in the afternoon. 3 p.m. That's the ninth hour. The Jewish day started at 6 a.m. And if you count from 6 a.m. in the morning until 3 o'clock in the day, that's nine hours. That's the ninth hour. So so they, were, they, they went up at the ninth hour, which was the hour of prayer. In other words, they had an hour of prayer. What is your hour of prayer? Do you have an hour of prayer? 
Glory to God. We have several hours of prayer. On our prayer calls, we got a we got a we got a 5 a.m. prayer call. We got a 6 a.m. prayer call. We got we got a, a 6 p.m. prayer call. Glory to God. We got a, a we got a 12 o'clock midnight prayer call. Glory to God. And we got 5 a.m. calls. In other words, we set a time and we set a place. Amen. The disciples had had the place of the temple and they had the ninth hour as as one of the hours of prayer. This one of the hours of prayer it was 3 p.m. in the afternoon. And when they went to prayer, they went up together. Notice, Peter and John went up went up together into the temple. Glory to God. They went up together. You see, that's why a lot of times you got to get you a prayer partner. You got to get a prayer buddy. You got to get somebody who will agree with you in prayer. You got to get somebody who will plan to pray. Amen. Hallelujah. You got to hang out with people who plan to pray. Amen. Because, it, you see, because that could get you involved in prayer. Get around folks who plan to pray. For you know it, you got a prayer plan. Amen. Peter and John went up together. Why together? Why? Because the Bible said, to you, you would agree on anything? He said, there am I in the midst. In other words, they went up together so they could have some agreement. Glory to God. So they went to prayer at the ninth hour. And we know what happened there because they were consistent. They live up to their prayer plan. They followed their, their prayer plan. They, they, they met this lame man that was lame at the gate. And they wind up healing the man. Glory to God. God used them to heal this man. And God was glorified through the healing of this lame man. Because they were consistent in their hour of prayer. Amen. They were consistent in, in meeting at that ninth hour. The lame man got healed. Peter was able to preach again. And another 5,000 people were saved. Glory to God. And God gets the glory for that. So, uh, what, what I want you to see here is that the disciples had a place and they had a time. You got to have a place and you got to have a time in order, a, 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 that you're going to pray. In other words, you got to have a prayer plan. I say you got to have a prayer plan. We got to establish a prayer plan. Okay? That's, that's, that's key number one. Okay? We must also pray, plan privately. We must plan publicly or corporately in other words private prayer needs a plan public prayer needs a plan amen our private prayer is our personal time with god in our prayer closet our public plan of prayers when we come together on our prayer calls we come together in our in-person services on sunday morning that's the public plan and we come up together amen and at 9 a.m hour at 9 a.m hour that third hour of the of the day that's our prayer time our public prayer time uh, uh, that's the third hour, or otherwise 9 a.m. Sunday morning. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Be with us on Sunday morning for 9 a.m. prayer. And, and, and you will establish a time and a place. Okay? Reason number one, why people don't pray? They don't have a plan. Brothers, sisters, set a plan. Establish a plan. And I want you to know, God will use you in a mighty way. And you'll see great and mighty things as a result of uh, uh, being that prayer warrior. Setting that time in that place. And that's what, that's what I'm talking about right now. Setting a time and a place. Okay, so key number one to, to, to overcoming prayerlessness is to set a time, set a place. You got to set a time, you got to set a place that you're going to pray. And, and, be, and be, be steadfast about that time. Because let me tell you something, the devil going to always try to distract you, get you off, cause things to happen, to get you off of that, off of that consistency of that time in that place. Amen? Glory to God. And if that don't work, set a different prayer, prayer time and place for yourself. We're talking about personal prayer. Okay, let's go into number two. Number two, uh, reason why God's people don't pray is a, a lack of discipline. Amen. We're just not disciplined enough. In other words, you got to be disciplined because a disciple is a disciplined one. Amen. Because if you if we are disciples, we gotta have some discipline. Discipline means to to be to, to, to be steadfast, to to, 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 to to always be where you say you're gonna be. In other words, to be consistent. Amen. And that, that, that's another word for discipline, is consistent. We've got to be disciplined. We just lack discipline, folks. We gotta discipline ourselves. Amen. We got we gotta discipline ourselves for God. Amen. And, and it's one of the reasons that that, that, that that a lot of people don't pray, they just don't have the discipline. You, you got to pray. You got to ask God to make you discipline, give you the discipline. And the, one of the ways we get discipline, we, we, we develop discipline to be disciplined people is through fasting. Fast, fasting produces discipline. Hey, amen. Because if you fast, you shut that flesh down. Glory to God. That flesh will not rule and, and the spirit of God will rule and the spirit, the Holy Spirit will make us disciplined. But we got to stop feeding the flesh so much because the flesh wants to be undisciplined. Amen. Fasting 
brings about discipline. I said fasting brings about discipline. Fasting will make us consistent in prayer. You see, because a disciplined one is one who will obey God consistently. And, 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 and key number two is that most people lack discipline. So how do I get discipline? Pray and ask God to make you disciplined. Pray and ask God to show you the things that will make you to become a disciplined disciple. Amen. So what, what, what that will be? Steadfast. Always where you're supposed to be, where you're supposed to be there. Amen. Consistent. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm talking about discipline tonight. Amen. And because discipline is one of the areas that a lot of people are weak in. They, they're weak in discipline. Amen. They're weak-minded. In order to be disciplined, you got to have a disciplined mind. Amen. Discipline starts in the mind. Amen. You got to make up your mind that you're going to be a disciplined disciple. You got to make up your mind that you're going to set a time and a place. You got to make up your mind that you're going to have a prayer plan. Discipline is one of the reasons. A lack of discipline is one of the reasons why a lot of people don't pray. Okay. Okay. Let's look at number three here. Number three, the third one or third reason, our third reason that we have that, 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 that God's people don't pray is, is, is because of a lack of faith. A lot of people just don't believe that prayer works. A lot of people don't, don't believe that that, 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 that prayer, prayer will produce. A lot of people just don't believe. I'm talking about God's people. They just don't believe uh, that, that, that prayer works. Amen. They just, don't have, they just don't have faith. A lack of faith. People just don't believe. And I would say a lack of faith in their prayers. A lot of people will believe for other people's prayer to work for them but they don't believe they don't have faith that god will hear them they just don't believe that god they don't don't believe that god will hear them it's a lack of faith not believing that their prayers will produce and the needed results and you see you see faith is one of the one of the stumbling blocks you see because if you don't have faith i'm, I'm headed to james the book of james james chapter one you see, because faith is, is a major key. See, without faith, it's impossible to please God, folks. We've got to be people of faith during this time. We've got to be people of faith if we're going to be uh, consistent. We've got to be people of faith if we're going to pray. Because without faith, you won't pray. A amen. And if, if you pray without faith, it won't produce. Now, look at James. What did, what did James say? James chapter 1. Hallelujah. Let me find it here. I'll be there right there in a minute. James chapter 1, beginning with verse 5. James chapter 1 and verse 5. It says here, James 1, 5. We're talking about faith being key number 3. A lack of faith being the key number 3. That's to why people don't pray. Because a lot of people, they have faith in other people's prayer. But they don't have faith in their own prayer. A amen. That's why a lot of folks always say, pray for me. Pray for me. Because why you always ask somebody to pray for you? Why can't you pray for yourself? Amen. Glory to God. Why? Because they don't have faith in their own prayer. They don't believe God will hear them. And we're going to look into that a little bit further. Why they are in that position that they don't believe that God will hear their prayer. Okay. James chapter 1 verse 5. It says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally, and abradeth not, and it shall be given to him. Okay, he said, if you lack wisdom, ask God. That means pray. Amen. That means participate in prayer. To ask God is to pray. He said, he gives to all men liberty, and it shall be given unto him. But verse 6 says, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is, is, is like the wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. Let not that man think that he should receive anything of the Lord. In other words, if you lack, if you, if you praying in doubt, if you got doubt, if you if you're wavering, oh God, I don't think God will hear me. I don't think God, I don't think my prayer is gonna work. He said, you might as well keep your mouth shut. He said, because you are not, not gonna receive anything from the Lord. He said, let not that man think that he should receive anything from the Lord. For a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And I would say a double-minded woman is also unstable in all of her ways. What am I saying? Well, I would say, if we're gonna ask God, let's ask in faith. Let's ask in faith. Let's believe it. God, I believe this because I'm asking according to your word. Glory to God. You see, and that's another thing. We got to pray based on the word. He said, if you, if you ask anything according to my will, I'll do it. What's his will? But his word. See, we got to pray according to the word. So if I pray according to the word, my faith is in the word. Glory to God. The word is in my heart. So I ask in faith and I believe God's going to bring it to pass. See, because if we have doubt, if we, are, if we got doubt, if we lack faith, it's a hindrance to prayer. 
Amen. And that's a lot. That's one of the reasons why a lot of people don't pray because they don't have faith in their own prayer. They don't have faith that God will hear them. You got to know that God will hear you just as quick as he'll hear me. Amen. Why? Because if I got faith, you can have faith. Amen. God, the Bible says he gives the, he gives to every man a measure of faith. If you're born again, you have a measure of faith. All you got to say is, I have a measure of faith, and I'm going to use my measure of faith in prayer. Why people don't pray? There's a lack of faith. They lack faith because faith, faith without faith, it's impossible to please God. And many believe that their prayers will not work, but they believe that the prayers of other people will work. So you got to get faith in your own prayer. I said you got to get faith in your own prayer. Now I'm going to go to Mark. Mark chapter 11, Matthew, Mark, Luke, glory to God. Somebody tell him thank you tonight. We're talking about why people, why God's people don't pray. Amen. And we pray that when we get these, the revelation of these obstacles, we'll begin to participate in prayer. And if you've been a prayer warrior, you've been pressing it, amen, pressing to these even the more. And don't let these things become an obstacle in your life. Amen. Establish, maintain your plan. Amen. Stick to your plan. Amen. Glory to God. You can develop that discipline and put faith as, as at the forefront of your prayer. Look at what he says here. Uh, and uh, uh, Luke 11, 23. Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. In other words, he, she shall have whatsoever she saith, but you cannot have doubt in your heart. A lot of people don't pray because they doubt if God will hear them. Amen. I'm establishing faith. Believe this word. Amen. You can believe the word tonight. Amen. He said, therefore, if, therefore, I say unto you that whatsoever things that you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. In other words, you got to first start praying. Amen. You got to establish that prayer life. And while you're praying, believe when you pray. Amen. Believe why you pray. Amen. Sometimes I stop in the middle of my prayer and I say, Lord, I believe what I'm praying right now. I believe while I'm praying. He said, if you believe while you pray, then you will have them. Because in the spirit realm, we receive when we believe. Amen. And we have them in the natural when God manifests the, the miracle in our lives. Amen. Why? Because unbelief, doubt and unbelief is a reason why a lot of people don't pray. My prayer is tonight that, 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 you, that you begin to live by faith, that you begin to pray by faith, you begin to establish your life on the foundation of faith in God's word. Because it's the faith in the word. When the faith in the spoken words, faith in the written word, the logos and the rhema, your faith got to be in the word. Amen. Why? Because the word is the foundation. I said the word is the foundation for all prayer. Amen. So, so faith must be in the word of God. Why people don't pray? Why God's people don't pray? They don't have faith in their prayer. Amen. Amen. They just don't have faith in their prayer. And why? Why a lot of why a lot of lost people don't pray? They don't believe God answers prayer. They don't. They believe prayer is a waste of time. Let me tell you something, folks. Praying to God is never a waste of time. The devil that fed that lie to the to the people of God, he that fed that lie to the world that that prayer is a waste of time. Let me tell you something. When you spend time in the presence of God in prayer, Amen. There's no time wasted there. That's the best time you could you could spend. Why? Because you get help from God's God's sanctuary. He'll strengthen you out of Zion. Amen. But it's, it takes faith. It takes faith in order to believe. Okay. Okay. Number four. Why people don't pray. We don't pray because we don't take time to pray. Amen. In other words, we think, most people think, a lot of people think that I don't have time to pray. You got 24 hours in a day. Everybody's got 24 hours in a day. You've got time to pray. Amen. And, but but you see, the enemy, he feeds that lie to people that, oh, oh that's just a waste of time. You don't have time to do that. Oh, 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 oh why, 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 why pray? What you going to pray? Well, you, you, you can't even see God. God don't hear you. No, no. That devil will feed that lie to you. It is fed that lie to so many of God's people that until they refuse to take time to pray. You see, because one of the reasons why people don't pray, they, they don't take time to pray. They feel like prayer is a waste of time. And, 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 they, and they, they, they get so caught up in their own situation, in their own life, and their own selfishness, they don't want to give God none of their time. 
Folks, let me tell you something. Yeah, selfishness is one of the main reasons why a lot of people don't pray. They're selfish with their time. They want their time for themselves, and they don't want to give God none of their time. Amen. Have you been giving God your time? Have you been giving God? How much time have you been giving God in prayer? How much time did you spend in prayer last week? Glory to God. Amen. Now, measure that now. Measure that now. Amen. If it's, if, it's less than, if it's less than an hour, you need to establish a prayer time. You need to get, get on fire with prayer. My prayer, to, my desire tonight is that this ignite a prayer fire in the people who have not been praying. And it will cause the fire to burn even stronger and brighter in those that have been, been prayer warriors. Amen. Those that have established themselves as God's prayer army. Amen. Let the fire blaze. Let that fire blaze in you brighter and that prayer fire burn. And let the fire never go out on your altar. Glory to God. But we think that it takes too much time from us. A lot of people think it takes too much time. Prayer, because prayer does take time. It takes time to spend in the presence of God. And we've got to be willing to give God that time. Amen. Because he says in Matthew 7, 7, he says, Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. You see, that takes time. Asking, seeking, knocking. Amen. That takes time. And a lot of folks just don't want to spend time with God. They're so selfish. They're narcissistic. Remember I told you about that word narcissist? In other words, they're narcissistic. And that's a person that's selfish. They want their time, their time for themselves. And they don't want to give none of their time to God. Selfishness. Not wanting to give time to God in prayer. Why? A lot of people don't pray. In other words, in other words they, they, they want all their time for themselves. They want to rest. They want to watch television. They want to do the thing that they like to do. Uh, work on their hobbies. Or work on their business. And they get so busy with their own selfish desires that they don't give God time in prayer. Folks, we've got to make a decision that we've got to give God some of this time. We got to give God at, at, at least an hour out of our day in prayer. At least an hour out of our day in prayer. Glory to God. If you do 15 minutes in the morning, 15 minutes around noon time, hallelujah, in between, glory to God, because I pray in morning, I pray around noon, and I pray in between. Hallelujah. All through the day. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. You see, you got, you, got to, you got to give God time. He gives us time. If God can give you time with breath in your body every day, you should be able to give God one hour out of your day to pray. Amen. I'm talking to you tonight. This is the Holy Ghost telling you. If God, if God gives us time, he's given us all these years to live. Hallelujah. You see, he's a merciful God. And, and, this, and God, don't want, God don't want 24 hours of prayer. Glory to God. God, you see, he told us something. Could you but tarry with me one hour? He said, you couldn't you can even tarry with me one hour. In other words, folks, we got to give God some of this time. He gives us time. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If God start taking back his time, a whole lot of people could drop dead. Amen. And you see, this is so important that, 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 that we give God our time in prayer. And one of the reasons why people don't pray, they don't want to take time to pray. Amen. You got to take time. You got to make time. And if you're too busy to pray, you got too much going on. You're just too busy. You need to cut out some of that stuff. You need to slow down and give God some of your time. Why people don't pray? They don't take time to pray. They, they're not giving God any of their time when God has been giving them all the time that they have been living. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, so giving God time and prayer. Amen. You, you see, because God desires to do great things for us. But God can't answer prayers that we don't pray. And you see, the reason folks don't give God time is because of idols. Idol worship. We got things in our lives that we put before God that we think that are more important to God than God. And, and we've got to get rid of these idols, folks. Let Ask God to show you the idols in your life. Your own self could be an idol. You could have yourself on the throne. You could have your own desires. I want to rest. I want to sleep. I want to eat. I want to do all this. I, 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 I. I. Yeah, that, that was Lucifer's problem. Amen. He had eye trouble. Amen. They talk about, I will exalt my throne above the stars. I will be like the most high. Oh, I, I, I. Hey, God had to kick him out because of his eye problem. Amen. In other words, selfishness, being narcissistic. In other words, only concerned about yourself and only want to devote your time to yourself and not giving God any of your time is a reason why a lot of people don't pray. My prayer tonight is that many will make a decision that you'll begin to give God some of your time out on a daily basis. Starting in the morning, at noon, at night, you're going to give God some time in prayer. Okay? 
Okay, the next reason why 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 uh, uh, a, God, a lot of God's people don't pray, okay, is pride. You see, because pride is one of the worst enemies to prayer. People who are prideful don't pray because people who have pride they think they don't need God. And when you don't pray and on a daily basis, you don't pray regularly and consistently, you're saying, God, I don't need you. I've got this, God. I can handle it. I don't need you, God. That's pride. That's the spirit of pride. That's Leviathan. And that's that spirit that must be broken in the lives of many of God's people. The spirit of pride is a reason that a lot of people don't pray. And a lot of them say, oh, I don't have pride. I don't have pride. Well, how much prayer do you do on a daily basis? How much time do you recognize and say to God, God, I need you. Glory to God. I need you today, Father. This is what I do on a daily basis. Starting first thing in the morning. Father, I need you today. I can't make it today without you. I'm praying. I'm lifting up my family to you. We need you today, Father. I'm not going to start my day without you. No. Pride says you can go. You you don't need God. Just going through your daily routine. Going to work. But go and do what you want to do. And never, forget, never think about God. Never give God any time, folks. That's pride. And God wants to deliver the church and his people from pride. Amen. Pride is one of the biggest reasons that a lot of people don't pray. Glory to God. Okay, I'm going to 2 Chronicles chapter 7. Glory to God. Uh, uh, key now, I think number 5. Pride. The spirit of pride. Folks, we got to get delivered from pride. Glory to God. And that, and that religious pride is a deadly thing. That religious pride is a deadly thing. Okay, 2 Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14. He says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, will forgive their sin, and heal their land. He said, now shall my eyes be opened and my ears attended to the prayers that are made in this place. Look at what God says here. He says, if my people, because we're talking about why God's people don't pray. One of the reasons is pride, folks. A lot of people have pride and they don't even know it. I, have, I, I hope I help you to identify the pride in your life. Because if we don't pray, it's a sign of pride. It's a sign of the spirit of pride operating. You see, because in order to pray, we have to humble ourselves. That's why he says, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray. Prayer takes humility. Prayer is a sign of humility. How much humility do you demonstrate? How much humility do you have in your life? How much humility? How much prayer do you have in your life? The amount of prayer that you that you demonstrate is the amount of humility that you have in your life. Because prayer requires humility. Humility is the opposite of pride. You see, you got to put that pride, you got to kick pride out the window, folks. And you got to humble yourself and say, I need God to start my day. I need God all through the day. But Pride is one of the reasons that a lot of God's people don't pray. I rebuke the spirit of pride tonight in your life. And, that, and the spirit of humility will set up in your life. And you'll begin to have a consistent and a regular prayer life. Pride is one of the reasons that a lot of people don't pray. Okay, the next one. Uh, that, that a lot of reason a lot of people don't pray is because of unrepentant sin. You see, because if you don't live a repentant lifestyle, sin gets into your life. Sin sets up a barrier and a wall between us and God. Why? Because unrepentant sin is another reason why a lot of people do not pray. In other words, you got to live a lifestyle of repentance. You got to live a lifestyle of regular repentance. Glory to God. You see, because if you got sin that's unrepented of, you didn't ask God to forgive you yesterday. You didn't ask God to forgive you today. Sin is an enemy. And sin puts a wall between us and God. Because uh, when we got a wall between us and God, where there's a wall between us and the Father, we're not going to go to the Father. Why? Because the sin wall is there. You see? Because unless we repent regularly, daily, consistently throughout the day, unless we repent, that wall is there. And that wall separates us from God. That wall will keep us out of prayer. Okay, Isaiah 59, verse 1. Behold, the hand of the Lord is not shortened that he cannot save, neither his ear heavy that he cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. Your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. In other words, sin separates us from God. In other words, if you got sin in your life, you got sin that you don't repent of, the more you don't repent, the farther away you get from God. The, the greater that wall becomes. Why? Because unrepentant sin separates us from God. 
Folks, we got to live a repentant lifestyle. You got to live a lifestyle of repentance on a daily basis, every day. You got to ask God to forgive you of your sin. Why? Because if you don't do that, that's one of the reasons why a lot of God's people don't pray. They don't live a repentant lifestyle. They don't repent every day. Amen. I believe in repenting every day. That the blood of Jesus Christ keep me clean. Keep my hands clean and my heart pure on a daily basis. Why God's people don't pray? A lack of repentance. A lack of true repentance. Of confessing their sins and forsaking their sins. Is one of the reasons why God's people don't pray. Folks, when we, when we overcome these barriers. When we overcome these obstacles to prayer. Then we're going to be his house of prayer. Okay? Uh... Also, another reason why uh, a lot of people don't pray, and, and I'll close with this one tonight, they don't know how to pray. A lot of folks just don't know how to approach God in prayer. Amen. And, and, and I'll give you a, 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 a compact formula for prayer so that you can know how to pray. Number one, if you're going to go to, go to God in prayer, you got to go with thanksgiving. The Bible says you got to enter in with thanksgiving. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. In other words, don't go to God with your shopping list. Don't, don't go to God and say, God, I need this. God, I need my loved one saved. I need my body healed, God. No, no. Go to God first with thanksgiving. You see, one of the reasons why a lot of people don't pray, they don't know how to effectively pray. They don't know how to pray. See, Jesus, uh, the only thing those disciples ever asked Jesus in, in, in Mark 11, verse 1, they asked Jesus to teach us to pray. They said, Lord, teach us to pray. In other words, they never taught, asked him to teach them how to preach, how to cast out devils, how to lay hands on the sick. They said, teach us to pray because they saw that the power that was in the life of Jesus Christ came from his prayer life. That's why they said, teach us to pray. They said, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples to pray. So God is saying that, 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 that we must know how to pray. Amen. We must know how to pray. And how do we, how, we a, a brief formula, a, a compact formula for prayer? Number one, you got to have Thanksgiving. You got to come before him with Thanksgiving. Amen. You got to come, you got to give him praise in spite of what you're going through. Sure, I know it's bad. I know the situation might be bad, but give God thanks. Give him thanks first. Amen. You give him thanks, then you give him praise. And then once you give him praise, then you repent. Ask God to forgive you of your sins. Number three is repentance. You got, we got, we got Thanksgiving. We got praise. And we got repentance. Then we can ask petition. In other words, make requests to God. Amen. Tell God what you need. Declare some things. In other words, make declarations and prayer. Amen. Okay. So we got, we, we got Thanksgiving. We, we come to him in thanksgiving. We come to him with praise. We come with repentance. And then we come with petition. We ask. And then once we've asked, we can also declare what his word has already promised. Pray prophetically. Make prophetic declarations. Declare some things in prayer. And when we declare these things, then we close it out in the name of Jesus. Always in the name of Jesus. You see, the reason a lot of people don't pray, they don't know how to pray. Folks, if we overcome these obstacles in prayer, we will become the prayer warriors that God will have us to, to be. And we can get answers for ourselves. We can see miracles, signs, and wonders. But God's people must become his house of prayer. And these are the reasons I believe. The main reason why I believe many of God's people don't participate in consistent prayer. Folks, if we can overcome these issues, overcome these obstacles... Folks, we will be the prayer warrior, the prayer house of God that God is requiring. And the miracle signs and wonders, the glory of God will come. The fire of God will fall like we've never seen it before. When God's people get back to prayer. And my prayer is that this has helped you tonight. Uh, my prayer is that it will get you started in a lifestyle of spending time, making time to spend with God in prayer. And may the Lord bless you tonight. Thank you for your time. And if you don't know Jesus Christ tonight, repent of your sins and ask him to come into your heart. And make a decision. You're going to stop the wickedness. You're going to stop the sin. And you're going to live for God. All you got to do is make your mind up and be sincere with God. And declare that Jesus Christ to be the Lord of your life. The miracle will happen. The power of God will come upon you. And the Holy Spirit will teach you to pray. Amen. And the Holy Spirit. You see tonight, it's not me that is doing the teaching. It's the Holy Spirit. You see, it's the Holy Spirit that teaches us all things. Amen. So if you learn anything tonight, God gets the glory. Because it's not me. It's the Holy Spirit. He said, the Holy Spirit, the company, will teach us all things. Bring all things to our remembrance, what he said unto us. So the Holy Ghost will teach you how to pray. He'll teach you how to pray in tongues. He'll teach you how to pray in your understanding with effectiveness. Let him fill you with the Holy Ghost and fire tonight.
Glory to God. May the Holy Ghost fill you with his fire tonight. May prayer language begin to operate in the name of Jesus. And you see, another, another reason why a lot of people don't pray, they don't think they got enough words. They run out of words so quick. They said, I don't know, what can I say to God? You see, because when I don't know what to say in my understanding, I, I, I pray in tongues. I'm You see, that's how I can pray for an hour. This is how you can pray for an hour in the spirit. Pray in tongues. Amen. Ask the Holy Ghost to fill you with the Holy Spirit. And then you begin to speak and pray in the unknown time. I'm talking about prayer language tongues. That you talk directly to God and God's going to be glorified. These principles will help us to be his house of prayer. And the glory of God is about to hit the earth because there is a remedy that God is raising up as his house of prayer. May the Lord bless you tonight and uh, keep yourself strong. Stay in prayer. Start your prayer journey. Amen. If you haven't started, start your prayer journey tonight. Amen. Take time. Make time. Spend that time with God. Believe God in prayer and God will, will, will use you in a mighty way. Establish your prayer plan, your prayer place, and your prayer time. And God will be glorified. Until the next video, see you in the next video. God bless you.